Hi everybody, welcome to worship. How was your Christmas? How's your year been? I know some of you have been able to be back in your sanctuaries. Others of you have not stepped inside a church for the better part of this year. And I can imagine that has been really tough. I know, personally speaking, I have so missed being in our churches and with my brothers and sisters. Well, today we are going to worship. It's a special time of year, the end of the year, the beginning of a new year. We give thanks to God that he's been with us and we pray to God that he will be with us in the time to come. So together, let us worship God. Let us sing to his praise and glory. We're beginning with a brand new song, specially written and played for us by the Heart and Soul Swing Band. Let's worship God. Thank you. 
Almighty and everlasting God, with heads bowed and hearts lifted up, we worship and adore you. For you are from everlasting to everlasting. In the beginning you brought all things into being. And when the time was right, you came among us in Jesus. And so we worship and adore, for he is Christ the Lord. Lord, your love for us is extravagant beyond description and wholly undeserved. We know we have fallen short. We have made for ourselves other gods. We have given our worship in other directions. We have not followed in the footsteps of Jesus as you have invited us to do. And so for your love, for your amazing love, we thank you, we worship and adore. Good and generous God. Some ask, What child is this? We answer, This is Christ the Lord. And so give us voices with the angels to adore him, the excitement of the shepherds to speak of him, and as those who travel from afar to bow before him. Receive the gift of our hearts. We love you, Lord Jesus. We worship and adore you. Let all that is with 
reading this morning from Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 38. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him, and then Simeon blessed them and said to me, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, the tribe of Asher. She was very old, she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them at that very moment she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his word. The fact of the matter is that I know very little about art. I don't come at it with a critical eye. The most I know is that there are different genres, different time periods, some of which I'm drawn to, others less so. But beyond that, my response to art is very much a gut reaction. Certain pictures I like, and others I don't. Simple as that. So my knowledge base is very limited, but I think I know this, that to properly appreciate a painting, you've got to step back. If we're too close, it's difficult, if not impossible, to see properly. If I'm going to see the big picture, everything that the artist intended Yes, I need to step back. It's a matter of perspective.
These two pictures illustrate the point perfectly. If you home right in on one particular piece of the painting, you might think it's a painting of a dog. But in fact, the dog is just a small part of something that is much bigger in scale. You don't get that unless you step back, unless you get everything in perspective. If it's true that we need to step back to fully appreciate a painting, then I'd want to suggest that it's equally true for all of life as we try to see it in its fullness and, if at all possible, make sense of it. And if you really want to begin to ponder the big questions about what's it about and where's God in all of it, then absolutely, you need to step back Stopping might be difficult, but certainly we can slow down and understand that we are in a long game, not a sprint. I want to suggest that we need to do the following. We need to pause. We need to be patient. We need to focus on the permanent and not just the passing and we need to persist. Number one, pause. Which can be so difficult when life is lived at such a pace. There seems to be little time to step back. I think many folks have worked harder in these last nine months than ever before. And if not in offices and in workplaces, then from one Zoom meeting to the next, go, go, go. Friends, take some time to pause. Even in the midst of the busyness, it's good to pause for a moment to appreciate that which is a little more enduring than most of what competes for our attention. God acts. God makes good on every promise. God is completing the big picture. It's just that his timescales are of a different order to ours. That's why we have to be patient. When I phone a business or a call centre, I want someone to pick up right away not to tell me I'm in a queue. When I'm web browsing, I want instant connection. Don't show me the wee arrow going round and round and don't even start with traffic jams or Scott Rail is sorry to inform you that your train is delayed by half an hour. I mean, I've got a life to live, stuff to do, people to see, places to go. You know, I'm in a hurry. Let's get this thing moving.
Reading the Bible, I never get the impression that God was in too much of a hurry. Think about Abram, for example. He was 75 years old when the promise was made to him, a promise repeated three times that he would be the father of a great nation. Don't you think that maybe in the 25 years between promise and fulfillment that he began to wonder if it was going to come to pass? Or what about the people of God in exile? 70 years removed from Jerusalem. You think they wondered? You think they doubted maybe whether or not God was going to come through for them? Or the thousand years between David and Jesus? No, God's not in any hurry. He's working on the big picture. And that requires us to be patient in trusting him. So we pause, we be patient, and we remember that that which is permanent is equally as deserving of our attention as that which is passing. Now, of course, this modern day building is much more recent, but there is evidence that there's been Christian worship here for 1,300 years. Can you imagine what's happened through all of that time? While people have worshipped on this site, there have been wars, famines, plagues, revolutions, reformations, unions, ups and downs, comings and goings, blessings and curses, sin and salvation, all of life and death. Even today, all of life streams past this holy place. And the backdrop to all of that, the eternal God, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. We're reminded we blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Much passes, but much remains. So there was Simeon, a God-fearing man, waiting for the salvation of his people. How long he waited, we've no idea, but he never gave up on the promise made to him by the Spirit that he would not die before seeing the Messiah, the coming of the Lord. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Simeon persisted. And beside him, Anna, the old prophetess, no doubt written off by many as an old fool. There she was, worshipping, fasting, praying, waiting, trusting that God would deliver on his promise. That's 
persistence. Apple juice, that's it. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. Folks, the big picture is that God always keeps his word. Abraham and Sarah were able to have a son. The exiled peoples were able to return to Jerusalem and there to build the city walls. And a descendant of David was born, Jesus, Emmanuel. And Anna and Simeon were able to see that for which they had waited so long. Simeon declared, For mine eyes have seen the glory that you have revealed, which you have prepared. What about us? Will we pause? Will we exercise patience? Will we keep an eye fixed on the permanent and not just that which is passing? And like Anna and Simeon, will we persist that we might see that God is acting, that God is with us, that the salvation of the Lord is among us, that his kingdom is coming little by little for those who have eyes to see. I know in the thick of it, it can be difficult, but let us step back that we might see the whole scene of what God has done, of what God is doing right now, and of what God will do in all the days to come. That's the big picture. Amen. And may God bless us in our reflecting. said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. Let us pray. Lord God, we look back on a year like no other and we could stay looking back mourning for the loss of lives, the cancelling of so many events, the separation of family and friends, we could stay complaining about all that was done and undone. But your boundless energy invites us to move forward. Taking the energy of your spirit with us as we step into a new year. Lead us into 2021 with expectation of the work and efficacy of vaccines, of finding you in each month that passes, comforting and strengthening us to bear the losses, exciting and compelling us to serve in your son's name. Remind us that as we travel into the unknown months in front of us, you will love, guard and guide us. But if we take our own light into the year ahead, we will end up walking on the wrong paths. Let us take the light in the gospel which belongs to our Saviour Jesus, that we will, instead of our mistakes, build trust in you as the shining light upon the church, that it may know what to do, what to stand for and what to become. Show us the opportunities to serve our neighbours in Jesus' name, telling them and our communities about the faithful God that stays beside us in trouble, loss and loneliness believing that you are inviting us to be a church 
that builds, befriends, and helps others to believe. And in Jesus' name, we say to the darkness of midwinter, I will put my hand into the hand of God, and that will be a better light and a way for us to trust. Amen. child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch I keep him this this is Christ the King Shepherds, God, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, God, the babe, the son of Mary. Thank you for worshipping with us today. And now, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and forevermore. Amen.